Let's just have a brief look at placenta previa. I've told you it is the second most common cause of antepartum hemorrhage, contributing to about 20% of all cases of antepartum hemorrhage. By definition, we refer to placenta previa as painless pervagina bleeding due to low-lying placenta. At or after 26 weeks of gestation, or before delivery of the, of the baby. Before delivery of the baby here, I mean that before the end of the second stage of labor. And this we should mark it carefully because in Uganda we have reduced our weeks of viability from 28 weeks of gestation to now 26 weeks of gestation. And this will help us. And as I projected here, that the placenta, this is for normal surgical placenta, which is at the fundus, and for abnormal placenta that has been stated is here, at the lower part, close to the cervix. And in this one here, it has occupied the cervix fully. So it is important to know that this is a case of the placenta previa, which I've tried to illustrate clearly for you here. Now, uh, clinically, it is important to distinguish from our aspect, what are the different types of placenta previa, because it will help us in the definitive management. And the management varies with the different type. You can either grade it, or put the type. For grade, you have grade one, grade two, grade three, and grade four. For grade two, it has those placenta that has been situated anteriorly. We have placenta grade two A, and this anterior. Can, placenta can also be situated posteriorly, and that is grade two B. Now, when we are matching the types and the grades, type which is called lateral placenta previa, it correspond to grade one, and marginal placenta previa correspond to grade two, which I told you already can be anterior or posterior depending on the location. Then we have type three, which is partial placenta previa, uh, and that is uh, grade three. Then we have grade four, which is complete. Now, why are we doing this typing and grading of uh, placenta previa? Because for type one and type two A, we can actually still ascertain and deliver this mother vaginally if there's no contraindication to vaginal delivery. However, for type 2B up to type 4, that is type 2B, type 3, and type 4, we normally want to optimize delivery and do it by cesarean section. Now, this is just to illustrate to you that the different types of placenta previa, we have type 1, and type 1, it means that this, the placenta does not reach the internal host but it is within less than two centimeters from the internal os. So that's why it's illustrated here. And this is a picture. This is the part of the internal os we are trying to indicate, illustrate for you. Now, type two, it means that the placenta has reached at the border of the internal os, but it's not covering the internal os. And I told you type two can be situated in the posterior or it can be situated in the anterior. Where you have anterior, it will be great. 2A and posterior, it will be grade 2B. We also have type 3, where we have marginal placenta previa. Sometimes when the cervix is not dilated, the placenta can cover the, the os fully. But when it is dilated, the placenta does not normally cover the cervical os or internal os fully. In type 4 or grade 4, as I've already indicated, it completely covers the internal os. This does not go without us knowing the risk factors because all the time we are taking our history among our patients, we need to ascertain the risk factors for placenta previa. One of them is previous history of placenta previa. The others include uterine scars and following cesarean section or dilatation and curettage procedure, even myomectomy. Then we also have multiple pregnancies. In other cases, advanced maternal age play a role Advanced maternal age here, we mean the age of the mother, 35 years and above. The other studies that are actually indicated that male fetus is associated with uh, placenta previa. However, those are the studies that have been done in the female and male populations. Now, if it is not placenta previa, what could it be? It could be a brachial placenta, could be vasa previa, it could be anything that is there at the cervix, cervical polyps. It could also be any bleeding ectopion, or it can actually be a cervical cancer. Now, this is a framework 
the algorithm for the management of placenta previa. Now, we consider this management depending on the gestational age. Those gestational age between 26 weeks and 37 weeks, and there is mild bleeding, or actually no bleeding, these women will confirm the diagnosis, and if it is less than 34 weeks of gestation, we give them corticosteroid to mature their lungs and have uh, enough surfactants. When these babies are born, they're able to uh, maintain their respiratory compliance or the lung compliance. While we continue monitoring this patient, we give them the hematenics. Now, if the mother is stable and the fetus is alive, we continue to try to make sure that we prolong this pregnancy so that they can go to term. However, we need to be able to determine the mode of delivery and because this patient needs to deliver in the hospital. Now, if it is, of course, type 2B or type 3 or type 4, we know that the mode of delivery is by cesarean section. We cannot compromise that. The other thing, the other weeks of gestation is when the weeks of gestation is more than 37 weeks, but the mother is not having significant bleeding. These mothers, we still make sure we confirm, we make sure we stabilize, we sustain these mothers, and also monitor the fetal heart. While we confirm that diagnosis and determine the appropriate mode of delivery because it's more than 37 weeks, so can be delivered. If there are no major contraindications to the vaginal delivery, induce that labor and deliver this mother. Induce with oxytocin or misoprostol and deliver this mother. But if there's contraindication to vaginal delivery, please proceed to do your emergency cesarean section after stabilizing this patient. However, however, this is a very common thing that we always realize in our daily practice. If it is severe bleeding, regardless of the weeks of gestation, please proceed. As you stabilize the patient, plan to perform an emergency cesarean section.